Hi, Anand. How are you? I'm good, man. How are good, you? Good, good. Yes. Uh, great trip to Birmingham University the other day. So that was exciting to see some of the innovation and uh, work that Birmingham University doing research in rail and rail uh, technology as such. But that brings me to another question is, um, we spoke with the University regarding local jobs and localization and getting that talent locally. So the Birmingham West Midlands region. So uh, something that, you know, that we obviously champion is localization in terms of, as I mentioned, job creation and finding local talent, but also what our Dialogue XR can do for localization. Do you want to quickly talk about Dialogue XR? And right. Uh, of course, uh, and, uh, the visit yesterday was great. And especially because we just made it in time before it started raining. Lucky enough. Uh, when it comes to Dialogue XR's localization, and I've spoken about this before on one of the videos, and I'll bring that point forth again is that it's very important when you have your data on which AI is going to train, you need to understand that data in context to what your regional preferences, culture and uh, traditions are. And uh, this does not happen if you're going to plug into an open source uh, chatbot and try to scrape in, uh, data through the internet and bring it because it won't be exactly relevant. That won't be the maximum efficiency or value that we are trying to create. And that's why Dialogue XR is different. What we've been doing with Dialogue XR is that we've been training it on local data. Right. And uh, it's, it's not just about training it on local data and deploying it. You need to train the model towards a particular goal right. and that goal would only be understood or would be understood better if the people working on it are also somewhat local or as close as local as they can be. Uh, something really different would be people from here trying to work on a product that is in Uzbekistan. Yeah. So there's a huge cultural difference, there's a language barrier, there's a vast wide gap in understanding of what goes on around there. And, and the other way around, you, you won't want someone from uh, Uzbekistan, Tashkent to be working on things that are over here. There's uh, the whole uh, study of Hofstede's uh, cultural mm -hmm. thing that I used to study in the MBA, I'm going to put in. It's, it's the, what's the cultural gap? How far apart is, is it in terms of religion, values, all of that, you know? So those things also come into play when you're training, training your AI models, when you're training Dialogue XR, when you're training a large language model to do a particular task, which is Dialogue XR is in that case, is a task-based LLM. Right. So, yeah. so, so for local services, because obviously now we're back from Birmingham, we're back in Coventry. Uh, so you could imagine the local authority here, Coventry City Council, incorporating Dialogue XR. So what could be relevant for the local people is something like, when are my bin deliveries? When, what items right. can go in certain right. foot so, so how do you think how we, we could incorporate that into the, the local authorities to help the services within Coventry? And where can you see the cost saving or the value saving? Right. The first of the value saving part or the, co the value saving part would be where you're giving a better interactive platform for people living over there who otherwise would struggle in terms of going to your website clicking on this button to go to that link to other another link and probably lost in translation or lost in, in the entire process of going from one link to another on the website and still not finding their answers. Uh, if what you do is take Dialogue XR, train it on all the data that you have, as you mentioned, when the bins yeah. are going to go out. And so this is the cultural aspect as well, because there is nothing like when are the bins going to go out in Mumbai. Right? Right, right? right. But it is over here, so it's important for lo localization to be an aspect over there. But coming back to this point is uh, uh, when you train it on all that kind of data, what people only have to do is they have to get onto your website or your application, however you want to deploy it, to get onto that. And they just ask a question that, as if they're talking to a person. Now again, the money that you save over here is to not offload all your duties to a contact center where yeah. a human will have to call in. Again, whenever you're trying to call into contact centers, the wait times are longer over here. I used to work in a contact center before as well. So it's, it's a good 15, 20 minute wait time, which is considered normal. So you are ideally spending half an hour trying to get one wow. question answered. That is if you're lucky enough to be connected to an agent who yeah. is in the system for a while and they know all the answers. Most of times the high churn rates in contact centers, people join for a couple of months, leave, new people come in, they get trained. So you, even if you connect to an agent, if they're new in the system, they're going to put you on hold. Go right. back, ask, the, ask, the, ask for the answers, come back to you, give you the answer, right? Instead of that, if you put in uh, an interactive chatbot, it could be voice enabled as well or just text enabled, however people want to uh, prefer interacting with it. If they ask, yeah, when, uh, when will the bins go out? What is the problem with this? What can I do if I have this problem in my in my uh, locality? 
and uh, whatever was there whatever the relevant answer is in your database which the human agent would have anywhere responded mm. with you can just come back with a feedback fantastic so again so that also leads to basically keeping the data sovereignty within the west midlands or right. whatever city exactly localized the region that we're working in exactly because what happens on dialog xr is again going back to the very first point is you are not connecting the internet to scrape through data that is available openly you are mm. only training it on data that is it is exposed to so if you are doing it for coventry and the other place is not even far away even if it's manchester the way you will have to do it and the way we do it for people is that you have your local small server and inference server on yeah. each node in your premise and the data is put onto that and trained from there and it works from there right. so your data stays within your region you're not even putting it to cloud because cloud again you don't know where your instance is going to be tomorrow as compared to today right, right? so over here keep it over there you have more control over the data it's within your physical uh, premises your physical security over it cyber security all kind of control stay there and then you get the benefit of ai on top of it that would help you improve your operations give an update to the society and give an uplift to your overall uh, image and reputation overall all right that's great okay that's fantastic right. I, th I think that's a pretty much covered a good in-depth talk into localization Thank you very much, Nangu, and we'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Hopefully, yeah. Thanks, Thanks a lot. lot.